this is Al Williams of Sunset Hill Solutions. Welcome back to uh, part two in a series of videos showing the new functionality of the new information design tool within Business Objects. Uh, in the first video in this series we created a new project, created a new connection, and we created a new data foundation layer. There's one more step to perform in this data foundation layer, and that is to create another reference to the employee, the DIM employee table, because this table stores employees and their managers. So if we want to report um, at the manager level, we want to have a reference to this table that has the managers, which can relate back to the employees. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and insert another table. And the table that I want is the DIM employee table. So I'm adding another reference of this table into the database and click on finish. So it recognizes the fact that DIM employee already exists in the data foundation layer. So I'm going to change the alias name to DIM employee manager and click OK. Okay, so now we've got the DIM employee manager uh, table in the data foundation layer, which is a reference to the DIM employee table. I'm just going to move things around a bit here so we can create the join. I'm going to move this table right beside the employee table and get back up to 100%. Okay, so now I want to join these two tables together. So at this point, I have to create a relationship between the the parent employee key and the employee key. The next step in the process is to create the relationship between the employees and their managers. So we'll go ahead and create that relationship between the employee key field in the DIM employee manager table and the parent employee key in the DIM employee table. And we'll go ahead and let business objects detect the cardinality of that join. Okay, at this point we've created our connection and we've created our data foundation. The next step in the process is to create the business layer. So I'll go ahead, right-click on the project, new, and business layer. So it's asking us what's, what type of data source we want to use for this business layer, and we used a relational data source. Next. I want to call this BL AdventureWorks Demo. Uh, BL is uh, the two characters I like to put in front of business layer objects and I'm just going to call this business layer for the AdventureWorks demo. I click on Next. Now I have to select the data foundation. In this case we only have one data foundation in our project. We'll go select that. By default it checks this box automatically create classes and objects. I'm going to leave that checked for now. Uh, this is a personal preference. I'm going to be going ahead and making a bunch of changes to the names of the objects it creates anyways, but I will leave that checked. And check Finish. Now we see that the business layer has been created. It's created a number of folders and objects within those folders. I'm going to change things around a bit. So the first thing, I don't need to have the currency keys or any of the key fields showing in the business layer because they're not really necessary for reporting. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of the key fields in the dimension tables. So now I've removed all the key fields from the dimension tables in the business layer. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is I like to have my dimensions and facts stored at the top level folder. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called dimensions. And facts. The next thing that I'm going to do, and this is just a personal preference again, I'm going, to, I'm going to move all the dimension classes or folders underneath the top level dimensions folder. So I just click and drag it and I drop it right in there. You'll see how its dim currency is now underneath dimensions. I'm going to pause the video now and do the same thing for the rest of the classes. Alright, so now I have all my dimension folders underneath the top level dimension folder. I have my one fact table underneath the fact folder. Uh, Another again, this is personal preference. I'm going to rename these folders. I already know their dimension tables. I'm just going to get rid of the dim prefix for all of these. I'll pause it and 
So now you can see I have a top level dimensions folder that has all the dimension tables and I have a facts folder that has the one fact table in this universe. So now we've rearranged our tables. We have all our dimension uh, objects slash classes in the dimensions top level folder and the fact table in the reseller sales table. Um, having a look at the fields in this uh, reseller sales table I see that everything is set up as a dimension when you have business objects automatically import the data foundation layer into the business layer that's what happens but we have a number of fields in this table that are actually measures that we want to measure the first field I can see that is a measure is the order quantity we want to be able to measure the quantity of orders for every product so I want this dimension to be turned into a measure. So I right click on the object and I click on turn in to measure. So now you see that the icon beside order quantity is a little bit different than the other. So this indicates that order quantity is now a measure. I'm going to pause the video and do the same for all the other fields in reseller sales that should be measures. So now I've converted all of the fields that really should be measures in the facts reseller sales table into measures. And if we have a look at order quantity, for example, it's a measure unit price. We want to measure the unit price when we do aggregations. We also want to make sure that we have the aggregation function set. So in this case, we want to sum the order quantities. And that'll be the same for all of the measures that we have in this class. Okay, one thing I've noticed here is I've called this folder facts. These are really measures. What I've done here is I've taken all of the fields from the reseller sales table that are really dimensions. For example, sales order number. The number of an order isn't something you're going to measure. That's the dimension. So I've created this folder called sales info and added any of the fields from the reseller sales table that are really dimensions. So finally, to be consistent, we have dimensions, and I called this folder facts because it was based on a fact table, but what I have left in reseller sales are all measures. I'm going to rename this folder to measures. So as mentioned previously, and if you've used previous versions of business objects, this will be very obvious to you. The interface in the information design tool is much different than the old designer tool. I'm not going to go through all of the differences in features uh, in this video. Um, there will be feature videos in which I explain some of these in more depth, but I just want to give you an idea of some of the nice functionality that's in here now. So I open the Employee Manager class and I select the last Name Manager field. I see an interface that lets me show the SQL script that, that runs to get this object. Select Employee Manager last name from Dim Employee, Dim Employee Manager. I can use a SQL Assistant to change that query if I want to and put in functions. I'm not going to do that for this demo. But the one, one really nice thing that I like is the show values. So I can see all the last name managers in this the underlying table. And I can set the maximum number of rows. I can also filter, which is really nice. So I want to see all the names that have A, B, B. It happens to be just one name. So it's a very easy way to drill down into your data if you're having issues with reports, etc., without having to go into SQL Server Management Studio, whichever query tool that you use for your organization. I've made a couple more changes to the data foundation. If you recall, the fact reseller sales table has three date keys, order date, due date, and ship date. And in order for us to be able to report on those three date dimensions. We have to have three different instances of that date table in the data foundation. So I have an instance called ship date which is tied to the ship date key and I have the same for order date and due date. And in the business layer I've created three separate classes instead of just the one date dimension class we have we now have a class for order date, due date, and ship date. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll be publishing this universe to a repository. We'll be creating some basic web intelligence reports just to make sure that everything is working okay. Once again, thank you.